Hello and welcome to Inside Science. Let's discuss the first issue that is your Sathi. Actually, Ministry of Science and Technology was founded in 1971. Under that, three departments are there. First is your Department of Science and Technology. Second is your de Department of Biotechnology. And third is your Department of Science and Industrial Research. Under this Department of Science and Industrial Research, two autonomous institutions are there. One is called CSIR and second is your CDC which is also known as Consultancy Development Center. This CSIR, uh, uh, the, the chairman of CSIR is your Prime Minister and 39 laboratories are there under this CSIR. Uh, uh, among them, two important laboratories are there. One is your Center for Cellular and Molecular Bi Bi Biology. Also, it is known as CCMB. And another is always in news, you might have heard, National Environmental Engineering Institute, also known as NIRI. And these two departments, uh, two uh, uh, laboratories are important under CSIR. Please remember this uh, thing. And what happened? This Sathi program was launched. This, this is also known as Sophisticated Analytical and Technical Help Institute. And it was launched by Department of Science and Technology, also known as DST under Ministry of Science and Technology. Already set up three such centers, one each at IIT Kharagpur, IIT Delhi and Banaras Hindi, Hindu University. It is planned to set up five Sathi centers every year for the next four, year, uh, four years. These centers have major analytical instruments and advanced manufacturing facilities to provide common services of high-end analytical testing, thus avoiding duplication and reduced de dependency on foreign sources. The main goal of this Sathi is science and technology infrastructure, efficient use of equipments, and intellectual property rights, knowledge transition clusters. Besides the Sathi initiative, extra funds to 100 top performing departments in universities and IITs etc. will be provided in 2020 for augmentation of their research facilities to global benchmarks. Guys, this is Sathi program SATHI. Another program is there also known as Sathi, S-A-A-T-H-I, this is different from this Sathi program. This, this Sathi is also known as Sustainable and Accelerated Adoption of Efficient Textile Technologies to Help a Small Industries Initiative. And the objective is to sustain and accelerate the adoption of energy efficient textile technologies in the power loom sector and cost saving due to use of such technology and it comes under ministry of textiles SATHI comes under ministry of science and technology SAATHI comes under ministry of textiles and another program is no, uh, there it is also known as SATH SATS also known as sustainable action for transforming human capital program and it is a program of niti ayog and main objective is to initiate transformation in the education and health sectors and build three future role model states. Let's discuss the another issue that is Pradhan Mantri Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana. Why it is in news? Because states, union territories and districts have been awarded PMMVOI awards by the Ministry of Women and Child Development for best performances in the implementation of the maternity benefit program since its inception in 2017. Let's discuss this Pradhan Mantri uh, Matru Vandana Yojana. Actually, it is a maternity benefit uh, rechristened from erstwhile Indra Gandhi Matrito Sahayog Yojana. And the scheme is a conditional cash transfer scheme for a pregnant and lactating women. It provides a partial wage compensation to women for wage loss during childbirth and child care and to provide conditions for safe delivery and good nutrition and feeding practices. This beneficiaries receive a cash benefit of 5000 rupees in three installments on fulfilling the following conditions. First installment is given for early registration of pregnancy and the amount is 1000 rupees and for second installment for antenatal checkoff and for that the amount would be 2000 rupees and uh, for third uh, installment 2000 rupees also would be given for registration of the birth of the child and completion of first cycle of vaccination for the first living child of the family. The eligible beneficiaries also receive cash incentive 
अंडर जननी सुरक्षा योजना दैट इज जे एस वाई दस ऑन एन एवरेज ए वुमेन गेट्स सिक्स थाउजेंड रुपीज व्हाट इज द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस पी एम एम वी वाई फॉर फॉर प्रमोटिंग अप्रोप्रिएट प्रैक्टिस केयर एंड इंस्टीट्यूशनल सर्विस यूटिलाइजेशन ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी डिलीवरी एंड लैक्टेशन एंड एनकरेजिंग द वुमेन टू फॉलो ऑप्टिमल न्यूट्रिशन एंड फीडिंग प्रैक्टिस इंक्लूडिंग एर्ली एंड एक्सक्लूसिव ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग फॉर द फर्स्ट सिक्स मंथ्स प्रोवाइडिंग कैश इंसेंटिव्स फॉर इम्प्रूव्ड हेल्थ एंड न्यूट्रिशन टू प्रेगनेंट एंड लैक्टेटिंग मदर्स देन द अवार्ड इज गिवेन फॉर दिस स्टेट्स यूटीज एंड डिस्ट्रिक्ट द स्टेट्स एंड यूटीज विथ ए पॉपुलेशन ऑफ मोर देन वन क्रोर द टॉप परफॉर्मर वॉज मध्य प्रदेश सेकेंड आंध्र प्रदेश थर्ड हरियाणा स्टेट्स एंड यूटीज हैविंग ए पॉपुलेशन ऑफ लेस देन वन क्रोर टॉप परफॉर्मर इज दादरा नगर हवेली सेकेंड हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड थर्ड इज चंडीगढ़ डिस्ट्रिक्ट हैविंग पॉपुलेशन ऑफ मोर देन वन क्रोर आर फर्स्ट इज योर इंदौर विच इज लोकेटेड इन मध्य प्रदेश कुर्नूल आंध्र प्रदेश साउथ सलमोरा मंकाचार हुच इज लोकेटेड इन आसम डिस्ट्रिक्ट सेविंग पॉपुलेशन ऑफ लेस देन वन क्रोर फर्स्ट इज योर सर्चिप हुच इज लोकेटेड इन मध्य मिजोरम थर्ड इज उन्नाइन हुच इज लोकेटेड इन हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड थर्ड इज पुदुचेरी एंड अनदर इज देयर मातृवंदना सप्ताह दिस मातृवंदना सप्ताह वॉज हेल्ड फ्रॉम सेकेंड टू एट डिसेंबर ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन द ऑब्जेक्टिव फॉर ऑफ ऑब्जर्विंग एम वी एस वॉज टू इंक्रीज द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द स्कीम एंड क्रिएट हेल्दी कॉम्पिटिशन एमंग स्टेट्स एंड यूटीज द थीम ऑफ द सप्ताह वॉज दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंट टूवर्ड्स बिल्डिंग ए हेल्दी नेशन सुरक्षित जननी एंड विकसित धारिनी सो दिस थिंग्स यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर सो लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट इशू दैट इज ऊज मल्टीपर्पज प्रोजेक्ट बिफोर मूविंग टू द इशू वील डिस्कस वाय दिस प्रोजेक्ट केम इन टू लाइम लाइट एंड वाय इट बिकेम सो मच इम्पोर्टेंट टू बिल्ड द प्रोजेक्ट एंड थर्ड ऑफ ऑल वील डिस्कस द लोकेशन ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट अंडर द इंडस वाटर ट्रीटी हुई वॉज साइंट बिटवीन इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान इन नाइनटीन सिक्सटी द वाटर्स ऑफ थ्री रिवर्स नेमली रावी सतलज एंड ब्यास हुई इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ईस्टर्न रिवर्स शैल बी अवेलेबल फॉर द अनरेस्ट्रिक्टेड यूज ऑफ इंडिया वाइल द वाटर्स ऑफ वेस्टर्न रिवर्स नेम्ड इंडस झेलम एंड चेनाब वे आर कलेक्टेड टू पाकिस्तान एक्सेप्ट फॉर स्पेसिफाइड डोमेस्टिक नॉन कंजम्पटिव एंड एग्रीकल्चरल यूज परमिटेड टू इंडिया एज प्रोवाइडेड इन द ट्रीटी सो आफ्टर दैट द ऊज मल्टीपर्पज प्रोजेक्ट इज प्लान टू फास्ट ट्रैक यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ इंडिया राइट्स अंडर इंडस वाटर ट्रीटी द प्रोजेक्ट विल एनहांस द यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ वाटर्स ऑफ ईस्टर्न रिवर्स नेम्ड रावी सतलज एंड ब्यास अलॉटेड टू इंडिया एज पर द इंडस वाटर ट्रीटी दिस दिस इज लोकेटेड इन ए रिवर ऊज इन द काठुआ डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ जम्मू एंड काश्मीर एंड रिमेम्बर दैट ऊज इज द ट्रिब्यूटरी ऑफ रावी रिवर हुई हुई इज ए ईस्टर्न रिवर इन इंडस रिवर सिस्टम दिस इज ऊज मल्टीपर्पज प्रोजेक्ट इज देयर एंड रंजीत सागर डैम इज हियर then uh, saha purkhandi project is there and uh, uh, lots of things are there after that you can see pong dam is there uh, bhakra nangal dam is there and here is your bass river and here is your ravi river where uz river is there and uh, uh, in uz river this uz multi purpose project is there so you can after that you can see indira gandhi uh, nahar project is there and after that bass uh, satlej link is there pong dam is there and lots of things are there you can have a look on it then india has also been given the right to generate hydro electricity through run of the river project on the western river which subject to specific criteria for design and operation is unrestricted india is also allowed to use 20% of water from indus chennab and jhelum which are also known as western rivers for irrigation power generation and transport purposes this is a unique treaty involving a third party since it was brokered by world bank a permanent indus commission was set up as a bilateral commission to implement and manage the treaty let's discuss the next issue that is blue dot network before going to the issue Uh, we will have a look on belt and road initiative which was the brain child of china and it was initially announced in year 2013 uh, and this project involves building networks of roadways railways maritime ports 
power grids, oil and gas pipelines, and associated infrastructure projects. This Belt and Road Initiative is an ambitious project that focuses on connectivity and cooperation among multiple uh, countries spread across the con uh, continents of Asia, Africa, and Europe. Actually, for namesake, it is connectivity and cooperation, and the main aim is economic and uh, to dominate the world. China's uh, ambitious project is this. And uh, if you consider the location, this is the red color is there. You can see this red color. Uh, this is Silk Road economic belt is there. And if you see this uh, this thing, this is Maritime Silk Road Initiative. These uh, things are there. And if a question, men's question is uh, being asked, then you can draw this diagram properly so that you can score a very good mark. Then uh, after Belt and Road Initiative, uh, US and other countries are trying to have a check on that and try to counter that so that China can't uh, proliferate its ambitious uh, dominating power over the world. Uh, this blue dot network actually it is a certification or evaluation kind of thing and they are uh, sustainability of the road or uh, maritime things are being checked so that China can't uh, have a uh, more uh, dominating activities. India may join the US led blue dot network that's why it is in news. The blue dot network was formally announced on 4th November 2019 at the Indo-Pacific Business Forum in Bangkok, Thailand. It will be led by US along with Japan and Australia. It is a multi-stakeholder initiative to bring together governments, the private sector and civil society to promote high quality trusted standards for global infrastructure development and it is expected to serve as a globally recognized evaluation and certification system for roads, ports and bridges with a focus on the Indo-Pacific region. In that manner when China is trying to be create a, an infrastructure and that time this blue dot network will uh, evaluate and uh, try to certify this uh, project so that China will be checked. This infrastructure projects would be regarded on date environmental standards, labor standards, etc. This system would uh, apply to projects in, in any citizen-centric country where citizens would like to evaluate such projects. It seems to be planned as a direct counter to China's Belt and Road Initiative. However, unlike the blue, uh, blue, uh, sorry, Belt and Road Initiative, the Blue Dot Network would not offer public funds or loans for the projects. This Blue Dot Network will serve as a globally recognized seal of approval for major infrastructure projects, letting people know that the projects are sustainable and not exploitative. India has not joined China's uh, BRI and US is strategy of trying to persuade developing countries in Asia Pacific not rely on Chinese funds for infrastructure, not rely on Chinese funds for infrastructure. This is the key line. The project covers two parts, that is, uh, we forgot to discuss this, it is the part of uh, this uh, belt and road initiative, two uh, segments are there, one is your silk road economic belt and it is a land based and is expected to connect China with Central Asia, Eastern Europe and Western Europe. Second is 21st century maritime silk road, it is a sea based and expected to connect China's southern coast to Mediterranean. Africa, Southeast Asia and Central Asia. Then uh, the next issue is locust attack. Actually guys, locust is a polyphagus, polyphagus uh, short horned grasshopper and it is much more dangerous uh, and it can uh, eat anything, uh, mean polyphagus, phagus mean able to feed on various kinds of foods and when they try to attack a crop, they attack in group you can see this kind of attack and then in lakhs of uh, population they attack the agricultural field so this is dangerous and because recently it was in news uh, before so one or uh, two months because locust attack was there in Gujarat and why it is in news because during the past few weeks major uh, locust attacks have been observed in several countries in western and southern Asia and eastern Africa. The Food and Agricultural Organization, which is a part of UN, has currently identified three hotspots of threatening locust activity, where the situation has been called extremely alarming. The Horn of Africa, the Red Sea area and Southwest Asia are those major prone areas. The Horn of Africa, which constitutes four countries, first is your 
Djibouti and second is your Somalia, third is Eritrea and fourth is Ethiopia. This is known as Horn of Africa. This Horn of Africa has been called the worst affected area where the FAO has said there is an unprecedented threat to food security and livelihoods. The uh, Red Sea area locust have been in South uh, Saudi Arabia, Oman and Yemen. In South West Asia, locusts swarms uh, have caused damage in Iran, India and Pakistan. Pakistan and Somalia have recently declared locust emergencies. What are locusts? Again, we will discuss. Already have mentioned it is short horned grasshoppers. And they are polyphagous because they are able to feed on various kinds of foods. And they are especially feeds on large variety of plants, leaves, flowers, fruits, seeds, bark and growing plant um, uh, points. And also destroy plants by their uh, sheer weight as they descend on them in massive numbers. A small swarm of the desert locust eat on average as much food in one day as about 10 elephants, 25 camels or 25 hundred people and in this manner you can imagine the how dangerous are these locusts and if they attack agricultural field can you imagine in what manner they can create damage the next issue is your crude spillage on Burhi Dihing river a stretch of Dihing or Burhi Dihing in eastern Assam's Dibrugar district witnessed fire following the spillage of crude oil which was being transported to Digboi refinery Assam is an ecologically sensitive state. Spillage of crude or processed oil in river bodies threatens aquatic life. Oil spill is the release of liquid petroleum hydrocarbon into the environment, especially the marine ecosystem due to human activity and is a form of pollution. Then we will discuss about the Dihing river because it is mentioned here. Uh, it is a large tributary of the Brahmaputra river in upper Assam region. The river originates in the eastern Himalayas uh, that is especially the Patkai Hills in Arunachal Pradesh and flows through Tinsukia and the Dibrugar districts in Assam to its con confluence with the Brahmaputra at Dihing Muk. Guys, this is the Brahmaputra river and uh, the important tributaries are there. Uh, in prelims 2018, a question was asked regarding the tributary of Brahmaputra and all the tributaries of Brahmaputra are very very important from prelim point of view. So please remember it. The Brahmaputra river is flowing in the, this direction and uh, these are your right hand tributaries and these are your left hand tributaries. Among right hand tributaries, Siang, Suvarnasri, uh, Bhareli, Varnadi, Manas, Sankos, these are important. And among this uh, left hand tributaries, Lohit, Burhi, Dihing, Dikhau, Dhanasri, Kopili, Kolong, these are important rivers. And uh, Dibang is also a uh, right hand tributary, I have not mentioned. So, these tributaries are important, please remember these things. Uh, this uh, we, we are discussing about Dihing River. This is Dihing River creates a number of Oxbow lakes in the area. We will discuss about Oxbow lakes also. Other tributaries of the Brahmaputra River are Dibang, Lohit, Dhanasri, Kulang, Kameng, Manas, Beki, Raidak, Jaldhaka, Tista, and Subhanasri. Already we have discussed. Then we will discuss in briefly about the Digboi oil refinery. It is India's oldest operating refinery. Oldest operating refinery is important and one of the oldest operating refineries in the world also. It is situated in Tinsukia district of Assam. The historic Digboi refinery has been termed as the Gangotri of the Indian hydrocarbon sector. Then we will discuss about Oxbow Lake because it is already mentioned. Uh, the Oxbow Lake uh, that starts out as a curf or meander in a river and you can see here so it is a river creating a meander like structure after that a portion of the lake try to cut out from the river and creates a Oxbow Lake and some water is there so it looks like a Oxbow. Uh, this uh, U-shaped lake forms along the side of the river as the river finds a different shutter and shutter course. Water doesn't flow into or out of the oxbow lakes, hence they often become swamps or bogs and dry off as their water evaporates. Guys, two GS questions and one CCR questions are provided. Try to solve this and put the answer in comment box. That is your prelim 2019 question and uh, this is your uh, GS prelim 2019 question. Please solve this and this is your CSAT prelim 29 question. Please solve this and put the answer in the comment box. Thank you guys. Have a nice day.